Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host, meteorologist DT from WeatherUs.com, former winter weather fanatic, now looking forward to the baseball season. I'm the captain of chaos, the colonel of confusion, the commander of catastrophe, and it's 11 p.m. here in the east, 11.15 at VCU has lost, unfortunately. And at 8.15 on the West Coast, let's talk weather. Lots to talk about in this edition of This Week in Weather, so let's get right to it. Obviously, we're going to be talking about the March 25, 26 possible severe nor'easter. Talk about a major change in the pattern, but is that does not necessarily mean the same thing that winter is dead completely. Uh, I do believe it's on a slow death here. Uh, we'll talk about the building El Nino, some indications of that. We'll look at some of what's going on in Europe and Russia, with interesting potential for a summer drought there. And that's probably going to be a pretty big story later on this summer, so I thought I'd do a little uh, a preliminary uh, groundwork for setting that up as a big story. All right, so let's take a look at here. Uh, we'll start out that this was yesterday's European um, from, um, <clears throat> I believe it was from yesterday's run here. And uh, actually, no, this is the, the, uh, this is the uh, 12Z run here from early this morning. And uh, you can see the uh, low here was off the Georgia coast very nicely. And uh, it uh, takes this sort of track, as you can see, up this way. And if we were to place the low off the Florida coast, let's say about here, it would do this sort of track. And as you can see, that's pretty far off the coast. And that's a significant shift from what the data was showing yesterday. So now this was the uh, this is the uh, zero, zero Z European ensemble some early Friday morning. And again, you can see it's actually further north. Uh, it's closer to the coast of low forms, and it uh, bombs it out east of uh, Nova Scotia. So uh, that's also a pretty good track. And again, if we were to draw the track here nicely, we would draw it from, well, you can see the dots. I put them in here so you can see it. And that's a pretty big hit for some areas, you know, in this area, right along the coastal areas in here in terms of snow, potentially. So uh, the temperatures are cold enough, maybe even at the low levels. Again, we're dealing with March. You know, that March sunshine, that's a problem. So we have to get the snow to fall really in the evening hours and overnight like we had a couple weeks ago, 10 days ago, with that March snowstorm. Then you get your big accumulations. During the daytime hours, it's really got to come down like a bat out of hell to get a lot of significant accumulations in the mid-Atlantic states in the late March here and early April. It does happen from time to time, but it's 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 a tough one. Now this here was the... Uh, 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 Canadian from midday today, and uh, you can see what the Canadian was doing is, again, it, it's a little further to the east. Uh, it finally got rid of the uh, 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 double low. It's, uh, it was having these forming two lows here. The Canadian for the last several days was having one low here and another low here. Finally, it's got one big low here. So there's Cape Cod. There's the benchmark southeast of it. And again, it's a pretty nice track. Uh, a little far to the east for many places, and uh, even if this does materialize, it's just going to be right along the coastal areas, as I've said before. If you're in the Piedmont, you know, if you're in the mountains of North Carolina, Virginia, the Piedmont areas in western and central Nor Maryland, uh, central Pennsylvania, eastern New York State, you may not see anything at all from this system, even if it does develop. All right, uh, this here was the uh, 12Z uh, Canadian ensembles from this afternoon, uh, midday, and you can see that the ensembles have a pretty big system, and, and once it gets north of Hatteras, look what it does here. It bombs it pretty nicely. You can see the low going from uh, here to here, and then once it gets from that position, it goes almost due north or north-northeast. And again, Cape Cod gets hit, coastal Jersey gets hit, it's far eastern Virginia, the Delaware Bay. If it's cold enough, it'll be snow. If it's not, it'll be rain or rain-snow mix and the Canadian Ensemble. Now, that's pretty far to the east. Now, the one model which did not go to the east today on this Friday afternoon was the afternoon or the 12Z run of the British model. It actually held course, and you can see it very clearly. I've highlighted the, the track. You can see it right there. And this is a huge track for the entire mid-Atlantic states. That's a big monster storm. That would be major snow for central Virginia, no doubt about that, for central and eastern Maryland, New Jersey, probably for New York City, Connecticut, southeastern Massachusetts. That's a big snowstorm for late in the season. That's a big, that's a big deal. But it's the British model. It's not my favorite choice here. And it also is against the grain. Most of the models today went east. Now, this year was the 18Z GFS. The GFS last few runs have actually been fairly consistent. Again, look what it's doing here. Now, this is the morning of March 25th. And again, it's cold enough over central Virginia for all snow. You can see here from the white lines. Let me draw the, the this rain snow line. This here is the rain snow line. You see it right here? The light blue and light green. That's your zero line. But you, 
given that it's late March, it really should be a couple degrees colder than that. So all of Virginia appears to be cold enough for snow here at this point, as well as western North Carolina. And then the low uh, goes like this and then like this. And, it, and you can see it's a pretty big system. I think 971 here. It's a, it's a monster low. And again, look how far off the coast it is, though. That's pretty far out there. So, again, right along the coast, if anybody at all. Now, this was the European model. Uh, this is the afternoon European model, the ensemble. And you can see, again, there's the low very nicely uh, off the coast. You can see how cold it is here. Here's the rain snow line right along this area. You see this? There you go. Change my marker so you can see it right there. And then the low uh, goes from this area here to here. And that's really far out. The look how far that is off the coast. That's pretty far out there. Maybe this area might get clocked, maybe, in southeastern Massachusetts, maybe. But that's a big shift to the east. The European was not showing that yesterday. It's much closer to the coast. Now, why is the European, why do all the models shift this system further to the east? Well, let's take a look at it. Now, this is a hemis this is a North American shot. Now, that we're looking at here is the color, different color lines, the blue lines, the green lines, the purple lines, right? The white lines represent the surface pressure. Let's draw the low end so you can see it quickly. Okay, here's the low area right here. Oops, let me draw it in right there. See it? Here's one high. Here's the other big Arctic high coming down. See it? Okay. So there's the low. Now this here is the trough. Okay, this right in here. This here is the trough coming in this way. Okay, these the northern branch is dropping into this branch and developing a low right here. Okay. Now the problem is this system here. Here's our ridge. You see the ridge? Now look what happens 24 hours later. Look at the ridge. Focus on the ridge here on the west coast. Focus right here. Okay. Let's look, look what happens. Okay. 24 hours later, ridge is gone. That system coming in from the Pacific crushes the ridge, boom. And what that does is that forces the, the low, which was here, to go this way, okay? This energy is coming in, coming in, coming in, and it's driving the system off the coast this way. So that's what happens. That's Now, I don't know if that's right. It may not be right. It's possible that the sh stuff could shift back to the west, but that's what that is why the model data was doing that. And you need to follow that to see whether or not that is, in fact, going to verify. We are seeing a Pacific flow. The Pacific jet is increasing in intensity. So that solution does, it is viable. It is possible that could happen. Okay. And uh, let's talk about another spring. Now, this is a shot from some friends of mine in the Great Lakes area. As you can see, that's their snow cover. Can you believe that? Oh, my God. And this is in South Bend, Indiana. Another one of my friends sent me this one here. Look at this snow in South Bend. Now, this is what the Midwest has to deal with. So if you're a farm in the Midwest, you have an awful lot of very cold ground, a tremendous amount of snow to get through before you get ready to planting. Now, as we go past this storm on March 25th or 26th, this is the day nine models, the European, the GFS. And what we're noticing here is, why I'll point this out to you here, is um, the trough right here. See this trough coming in here? All the models have this trough. See it? All the models have this. And what that does is, correspondingly, if you get a trough here, uh, you have to get a ridge, uh, you know, uh, forming in the southeastern United States. And sure enough, we can see it. We can see the ridge forming um, right in here, the ridge forming in here, ridge forming in here. The polar vortex has gone way to the north. And the block over Greenland is now back over Scandinavia. So this is a pretty mild-looking pattern here as you go into the first couple of days of April. And this is the Day 10 European Ensemble mean. All right, so this is Day 10 European Ensemble. And we can see some important features here. First, we have two polar vortexes. We have one here, very nice, and another one here. So that's a, you know, a polar split. And you can see the split right there. So we have one for the Eurasian side, one for the North America side. But again, look at the energy coming into the West Coast here. And that causes a ridge to form here, and the jet goes way up like this, and everybody warms up. And that's one of the reasons why the pattern's going to turn warm. And if you look at the CPC 6 to 10, 8 to 14 day, they do have it getting pretty warm over the east and a half of the country. But this has been obvious now for some time. Now, this is the day 10 surface map on the European Ensemble mean. Uh, again, and you can see, look at these warm temperatures way up in here. You know, all the cold air is way up this way. So this is all mild, mild, mild temperatures racing east. Pretty good rain developing in the central plains, the Midwest here a little bit, but it's definitely a mild pattern. This is the day 10 uh, European, the operational run. Obviously, it's a little warmer, but look at these warm temperatures. Wow. Is this right? Look at this. Woo, baby, that is warm. Look at these temperatures pushing in. So the warm air is, is coming, no doubt about it. Uh, now, that may be overdone for the plains, but remember, this is where you have the drought. This is all the drought area right in here. So that's one of the reasons why these temperatures may be really warm. The drought may already have, be having an effect on the, uh, the heating coming up for uh, day 9 and day 10 as we go into early April. 
And this is a schematic of the European pattern. This is what it looks like. You know, take away all the lines. You just look at the mean pattern. The height rises, the height falls. And you can see what's happening here, that the uh, jazz clearly, uh, the vortex is clearly retreated up right here. As you can see it. We have a trough which is developed here, and the jet is doing this. That's warm. That's what it is. It's not a complicated pattern. This is a pretty easy one. This is the G6E GFS Ensemble out to April 5th, and you can see the ridge builds in towards the East Coast a little bit. That's a warm pattern. That's, that's what that is. And this is the 16 to 20 day analog model. Now, this is a model which some energy meteorologists have developed, which I use from time to time. And it looks at the top 10 analogs from the CPC site at the day 11 and day 15. And it rolls it over into 16 to 20 day and see what it looks like. And you can see how amazingly warm it is over the plain states. And that does match the warmth we see there. So that's not one of the reasons why that's going for a pretty warm pattern here. Notice New England's still pretty cold. Not that warm in New England the Great Lakes. It's getting there, but still not yet. And another thing I want to point out here is the ocean water temperatures. Now, this I've talked about before many times. Now, this is the, uh, let me call it my market here. This is February 25th, and now this is March 16th. What's happened is this pool has now moved towards the West Coast a little bit. So what's happening is the positive teenage pattern may be moving to a positive PNA pattern, which would actually be good for the East Coast later on this uh, summer and spring if you don't want a lot of hot weather there. And if we look at week three and week four, we can see that it does get cold again in the second week of April. You know, April 4th to 10th, there's more cold air that comes down, and then it retreats back and forth. And I believe this back and forth pattern is going to continue for a while as they continue to dominate and fight for control of the Western Hemisphere. And then if we look at the uh, rainfall, well, that's a pretty wet pattern. And again, if you're cold and dry and you're going to break the pattern, you're going to turn warm and wet. Okay, so it's pretty simple here. We, uh, if, we, we, if we are cold and dry, let me... Uh, if we stick with this here, we're cold and we're dry, right? Now, if that pattern is going to end, what's going to happen? You're going to turn warm and you're going to turn wet. That's what it is. You can see the rain here, April 4th to 10th. Good rain here over the plains in the Midwest, April 11th and 17th. And the pattern is significantly warmer. Now, finally, one other point I want to make out here, this is the El Nino here. Look at these warm temperatures, subsurface developing. Wow, 4 degrees Celsius above normal. Yeah, that El Nino is coming. This here is the new European model. Look at this thing explode. Uh, it's still pretty chilly right now, but look what happens come May. When it gets to May, look at this. It really takes off. And then we have a pretty good uh, moderate or maybe even strong El Nino developing during the summer months. So that would be interesting to see. And look at the 30. The other thing I want to point out here, what's going on in Europe. They've had a pretty uh, warm and uh, very dry winter over Central and Eastern Europe and the Ukraine, and that's going to be a problem. This is rainfall relative to normal over the last 30 days. Look how dry it has been in Germany. Good, googly, moogly. Look at the Poland. Look at the Romania's had a little bit of rain, but look at the Ukraine. And let's look at uh, the last 90 days. Now, we have had, we have a lot of rain in, 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 Euro, in Great Britain and France and Spain with these storms coming in from the west. But over here, it's still very, very dry. In, uh, in all of the areas, it's still dry. And if we look at uh, the Ukraine and Central Russia, where they grow tremendous amount of the Kazakhstan is amazingly dry. Wow. Uh, Ukraine's dry, Southwest Russia's dry over the last 30 days. And if we look at the last 90 days, we can see amazingly large areas anywhere from 40 to 20 percent of normal rainfall. It's been very dry. And what that does is that extra dryness is going to affect the, hot, the, the, the weather, the heat, when it turns hot later on in the summer. Just like in the winter of 2011 and 12 here in the U.S., where we had no snow all winter, we had really warm temperatures. And what happened this summer? We had a killer drought. We had that huge dirt shield that came through, and it was amazing heat, 100-degree temperatures day after day after day. Same sort of thing here, folks. And let's look at these rainfall maps. This is the CFS for June. Look how dry it is over Ukraine and Russia. This is going to be a big story, folks. I'm not kidding you. Later on in the summer. And uh, folks will claim it's global warming. It's not, but that's what they'll claim. And then look at this here in July. Look how dry it is. Oh, my God. That's a drought, folks. That's a strong signal for a drought. Anyway, I just thought you might want to take a look at what's going on in other part of the world. It's just something a little different this time. This is meteorologist.com. I'll talk to you soon.